last year I had a problem with germination. I had to plant seeds four times in order to get seed starts to go. This year, that's not a problem, and I am so relieved. I might actually have to thin some of these plants because there are too many starts in one cell. What would really be a shame would be getting these plants started and then having them all victimized by insects. The cabbage moth is a problem here. They all germinated. Now let's see what I can do to protect them. So now that I've got my plant starts all going, I'm really excited about having the cabbage and the Brussels sprouts. I'm not really excited about the cabbage moth that will absolutely get to my cabbages. Every time I plant cabbages, it doesn't matter where I am, the cabbage moth finds them. I think we have a, a cabbage white butterfly, but it's still got a cabbage worm that, that eats the leaves of the cabbage and will make a mess of the plant. I should be thankful I'm not dealing with the same insects my friends are. One of my friends has Japanese beetle. One of my friends has flea beetles. One of my friends has slugs. And then I have squash beetle and cabbage, cabbage moth. That's five. So let's address those five garden vegetable garden pests and uh, see what we can come up with. I did some research and looked into plants that can be used as companion planting, plants that will deter other, the, these pests from your plants so they're nearby and the, the insects either can't smell the plant that they want so they just avoid, they just go right on by or they are so repulsed by the smell of the companion plant that they avoid the area completely. Another approach is the um, trap crops. Trap crops are a sacrificial plant that you put near your desired crop and they lure the insects or the pests away from your plant onto the sacrifice plant. Ants and aphids love uh, roses or lilies or you know different things. I did not address ants in this but uh, definitely you can look that up online and find that too. I have ants but they're not in my garden. They're around my house so I've um, I, you know they're, they're, we've got some sandy soil near the house and they're around the sidewalks and sometimes they come in the house so I'm putting you know peppermint is one that I've got around the base of the house. Luckily peppermint re deters ants and mice so having peppermint around the foundation is a fantastic plan. I only have it on about a third of my house so I'm going to be planting some extra plants around the house this year. Uh, just a little bed that's maybe a foot wide maybe two or three feet wide if you want it to look proportionate and uh, I'll be putting in mints and, and lavenders and sage and all kinds of uh, herbs in there to uh, deter the ants and mice from my house. Now let's go to the vegetable garden crops and uh, see what I've got going on here. Catnip is a plant that a lot of insects will avoid. I have feral cats in the area so I don't want to put catnip in my garden but if you have felines in your house that will enjoy catnip then it might benefit your home and garden more than it benefits mine. For me it would actually draw in the cats and that could be a problem. Maybe my friend who has a problem with Japanese beetles can use catnip as a deterrent. And then she can harvest it and save it for her kitties for the winter. She'll have cats in the garden for sure. Another common one, common theme through all of these is chives. Uh, you can, and then you can mow them down. The problem with mint or with catnip, which is part of the mint family and chives, is they will come back year after year. And if you don't have a problem with that, it's kind of a nice weed to have, isn't it? The smell of catnip and the smell of chives in your garden. I wouldn't have a problem with that. It's better than goldenrod or dandelions, but dandelions are edible too. Wormwood. This is sweet Annie wormwood. It is of the Artemisia family. It, it's, it has uh, a, a very fragrant um, scent to it. It is almost menthol or uh, eucalyptus scented. It's very strong and um, that's a great one to get rid of plants, uh, um, rid of pests too. And mice also don't like it. It does self-seed so you'll also have to watch where you put that. But again, 
Do, what, what harm is there in having that smell in my garden? I might actually like that one. Another quite common one was garden sage and uh, you can use it for culinary purposes. It is perennial. It will grow a woody stalk and you can just mow over it and then come back to it next year it should start again and if not you start new plants. They're, the packet of seeds isn't very costly. Um, this one is around the foundation of my house. I keep sage near the house to deter mice. Marigold and calendula are also two very specific uh, deterrent plants for almost all of these pests but uh, you do your own do your own uh, deciding on that um, marigolds are fragrant and calendula has got medicinal properties for salves and ointments and they're both a beautiful yellow orange color and they'll draw in pollinators so that's good for your garden too um, so I'll be planting calendula everywhere this year now let's get into the specifics so let's start off this list with Japanese beetle. They are a beetle about the size of a raisin, maybe a little smaller, and they have a bronzy or green metallic look to them. These can be vacuumed off of your plants. If you've got a dust buster, you can walk through your garden with your dust buster and just vacuum them up. Apparently some people think that squishing them releases a pheromone and draws in uh, more beetles because of the smell, so I wouldn't squish them. But definitely a dust buster. Walk around your garden and just vacuum them off your plants or brush them off your plants into a little container of soapy water and uh, dispose of that. Plants to deter Japanese beetle. I have catnip, garlic chives, garlic or chives, and in this case this is garlic chives, Mexican marigold, and nasturtium. These are all great for deterring the Japanese beetle. And a sacrifice plant to draw the, be the beetles away from your garden would be roses or crab apple. They're the, probably the easiest to put in. And then there's grapes, uh, linden or basswood, and Norway maple. If you have a property that already has the maple, then maybe you need to move the maple away for, you know, take some maple trees down, Norway maple or linden trees down around your garden so that they, the bugs have to go a little further out to find their, their preferred food. Next will be flea beetles. Flea beetles are about the size of a tip of a pencil and they are black and they, they look like a flea. They're just a tiny little beetle and they can decimate a garden. Uh, the best way to control these is or reduce these is to clean your garden up in the fall and don't leave any plant debris around. But that's counterintuitive to putting mulch on your garden, leaf mulch on your garden in the fall to protect your soil. But that's one way you can get rid of the flea beetles. Plants that deter the flea beetle will be catnip, mint, and hyssop. I don't know if hyssop runs wild as much as mint does. You could try putting your mint in containers throughout your garden or your catnip in containers throughout the garden so they don't run wild. I don't think catnip is quite as wild as mint, peppermint, but uh, your, your conditions might show different things. Sacrifice crops to put in to attract flea beetles away from your garden would be Pacific Gold Mustard. I don't know if that's the same as any average mustard, mustard plants you would put in, but it, the, the research I did was very specific that it is the Pacific Gold Mustard. Pak choy, nasturtium, which is good as a deterrent for other insects, and it will act as an attractant for the flea beetle, and that will attract the flea beetles to the nasturtiums instead of to your other plants. It's a decoy. It's a, um, a trap crop, a sacrifice crop. You put that in there and let them have it. And basil. If you plant 16 times the amount of basil you want because the, the flea beetles also like radishes and basil. Let some radish go to seed and the leaves are still tender and uh, let grow extra basil. Let the flea beetles have at it. Keep, keep a plant in your house or if you know the flea beetles, you see two or three, you harvest your crop. And then let them have the rest. Now for me, the cabbage worm is a problem. Cabbage worm is deposited on the underside of the leaf by the white little white butterflies or little white moths. And um, 
the one the best way to deter that is to put a row cover of um, woven fabric over top or spun fabric over top of your your cabbage rows but if you're growing huge amounts of cabbage then row covers are a little more challenging this is a some say it works some say it doesn't um, putting out fake butterflies as a territorial deterrent cabbage bu cabbage white butterflies are territorial apparently and putting them um, putting a decoy out of another white butterfly might deter them and keep them out of the area but on the other hand, I've also seen two or three of the white cabbage butterflies in my garden all at the same time. So what does that represent for being territorial? They're there together without attacking each other. <laughs> so to deter the, the cabbage worm, you want to deter the cabbage moth and the cabbage white butterfly, marigold and calendula, also called pop marigold. And I love both of these. Uh, calendula, I will be planting a lot of calendula. I will start some indoors and I will start some outside, fresh, straight in the soil. Calendula can be used for salves and ointments, but if it's also a deterrent, that's fantastic. I don't care if it grows wild. I would love that as a weed in my garden. So a sacrifice or trap crop, you can use cress. Now, I've never grown cress. I recognized it when I looked up a picture of it, and I will be looking for some seeds of that. Because the cress has more of a fragrance, it will attract the moth or butterfly instead of having them attracted to your cabbage. So I will sacrifice cress so that I can have some cabbage and some Brussels sprouts. Mmm, slugs. <laughs> It makes me think of Harry Potter where uh, Ron Weasley had was casting a spell but his wand had been broken and he said eat slugs as he cast a spell and his wand actually s turned the spell back on himself and uh, yeah he was he was he ended up with a case of very large slugs. Slugs look like a snail without a shell. They are slimy and they leave a glittery silver trail on your plants and they eat holes in it and they they can totally decimate a plant and uh, make a big mess. So for the slugs you want to use the deterrents of mint which can grow wild in your garden uh, so do you want you have to decide if that's what you want or not. Um, sage, thyme, basil but the basil might attract the flea beetle. Parsley and rosemary so sage, thyme, rosemary, and basil are all pretty fragrant and they will deter. And I would have as much basil as I could. If I didn't have a problem with flea beetles, I might just do that. Um, sage and thyme and rosemary, yeah, these plants are, are perennial in my area. I'm a zone 4, a 4B I think, and uh, I'll just mow them down at the end of the year and let them come back up in the spring they are something that I can harvest and cook with as well. I don't cook with much sage, but I definitely cook with rosemary and thyme, so those things can go in my garden. I just have a start of slugs last year, so I think I will do that. I'll put some sage, thyme, and rosemary in my garden. And plants to avoid with slugs because they will attract them, so this will be a sacrifice plant or a trap, clop, trap crop. Uh, chervil. I have no idea what chervil is. I didn't actually do research on that one to see what it looks like, but uh, you put the chervil near your lettuce and the slugs will be more attracted to the chervil and your lettuces will be left alone. Marigolds near tomatoes and tender salad herbs. This one would work really well to put around the perimeter of your garden so that it draws the slugs outwards from your garden. Surround your garden with clover, coleus, dahlia or hostas. So you could put a pretty garden bed around the outside of your, your garden. I'm thinking of Rachel specifically, the girl who created this book I'm actually using right now. She has a garden that is fenced in and she could take red clover, coleus, dahlia and hostas and put them around the perimeter of that fenced garden and that might draw the slugs outwards because they're attracted to these other plants. But she can certainly put red clover in her pathways or coleus in some of her beds and uh, hostas in some of the beds. They'll come back year after year and uh, yeah that would ha might ha that might help with the slugs. And the last one, number five, is squash beetles. 
I have a problem with squash beetles down in my lower acre and uh, they came on at the end of the year so they didn't actually affect the plant as it was growing. They, plant, uh, uh, they affected the crop just at harvest time. I saw them. I was out there one day, there was nothing. I was out there the next day and they were there. Any squash that I left on the vines were then attacked. As soon as I saw the beetles, I pulled as much as I could, but some just weren't ripe yet and I lost a few of those. We still have squash in our storage, so it's not like I lost too many. Plants to deter the squash beetle. Nasturtium, catnip, garlic, onions, marigold, calendula, tansy. Are you noticing a trend here? All of these plants work as deterrents on all of these pests. So why not go with that? And then one single plant came up on a few different spots I was researching. One single plant came up as a trap crop. Cr wow, I can't say that word. <laughs> one single plant came up as a trap crop on the squash beetle, and that was a blue hubbard, which I believe is a squash. And um, it, you just put it out there and you let it act as a, as the sacrifice. They prefer this over any other squash. So that's great. I'm not going to be eating blue Hubbard squash. I think Hubbard squash are very hard to, to get into. Some squash are a little softer than others and some are a lot harder than others. But the blue Hubbard squash could be a sacrifice. I'll have to look for some of those. I might have to go shopping online. It's still not too late here in Ontario. So there you go. Five garden pests and a list of plants to deter them or to act as sacrifice crops. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I hope this is beneficial to you. I will see you next time.